Hello. Now, accepted wisdom has it that the internal combustion engine is living on borrowed time and we are just on the dawn of an electric vehicle revolution. Mazda begs to differ and with this new Skyactiv X engine, debuted here in the new Mazda 3, it hopes to prove that there is an alternative to going electric. In fact, it's coming out with some quite punchy language to describe this car, saying that electric vehicles and the claims that they are zero emissions are disingenuous and that actually electric cars are not the saviour that they are perhaps portrayed to be. That really is going against the grain of the whole industry, of regulation, of everything. So it's quite a bold move by Mazda and especially to launch a car in this day and age with a two litre naturally aspirated petrol engine and claim this is the answer to our modern day motoring needs. Sounds like a backward step really, doesn't it? But it's not. This is a really, really interesting technology. What has Mazda done? Well, it calls it spark plug controlled compression ignition. And bear with me because explaining this in simple terms is not easy. So basically what we have, as I say, is a two litre naturally aspirated petrol engine but it's not your typical two litre naturally aspirated petrol engine. It uses a combination of conventional spark plug ignition and compression ignition like a diesel. And really what Mazda is claiming with this engine is that it has the kind of free revving character and the, res and the response that we love in petrol engines, but it has the low CO2 and low end torque of a diesel without all the horrible rattly engine noise and black smoke. So that's a nice, idea isn't it and the headline co2 figures of 96 grams per kilometer out of a two litre petrol engine are really quite extraordinary now if it all adds up it could be really really impressive how has Mazda done it well it's quite complicated so the idea is that you're trying to put less fuel into the fuel air mixture into the engine and if you do that if you make the mixture lean enough uh, the, the spark plug won't actually work, it won't ignite the mixture, so then you have to rely on compression ignition like a diesel. The compression ratio on this car is 16 to 1, which is more like what you would get out of a diesel. It also uses a spark plug to kind of help the combustion process along under load or when the engine's cold and things like that, but essentially it's a petrol engine that works like a diesel and has, as I say, the intention the best of both worlds. Now I've driven the Mazda 3 already in its standard form and it's a really really beautiful car and it drives nicely but in its 2 litre Skyactiv G form, the standard petrol engine, it's just a little bit gutless. 122 horsepower out of a 2 litre petrol really doesn't live up to these lovely looks. Skyactiv X is now coming on stream in the Mazda 3. It's the first car to have this engine and the one you see here is the kind of range topping with all-wheel drive and all the bells and whistles. It's a beautiful looking car. It now has 180 horsepower with this Skyactiv X engine and hopefully the performance to do those looks justice with a whole load of technical intrigue on the side too. It's perhaps not the most exciting looking car on the face of it but this could actually be quite revolutionary. So I'm very lucky in my line of work in that I don't really get to drive many ordinary cars. I'm uh, very fortunate I get to play around with some fairly fast, fancy and exotic stuff on the whole. So it's quite a change for me to be in something so kind of mainstream and everyday as a Mazda 3 hatchback. But I think this particular one is worthy of celebrating and talking about because mainly because of that engine. The um, Skyactiv X engine really does set it apart as something, to my mind, quite exciting, which is perhaps surprising when you consider what a kind of uh, unconventional package it really is. I mean, here I am in a C-segment hatchback with a naturally aspirated two litre petrol engine and a manual gearbox and nothing really revolutionary in its kind of mechanical layout in those terms. But really, I think this Skyactiv X engine really could be considered, well, maybe revolutionary, at least in terms, or a very, very big step in the story of the internal combustion engine, and one that will hopefully keep it alive for a good period yet. So I'll get my kind of road testery bit out of the way first. This is a Mazda 3 Skyactiv X Sport Tech. This one's got all-wheel drive. You can have it with front-wheel drive as well. Um, it is basically the top of the range of the new Mazda 3 as you can buy it now. 
Um, it costs about just shy of £30,000 in this spec and in that kind of Japanese way kind of everything's included. The only options on this car are the kind of nice fancy grey metallic paint and this really rather lovely burgundy leather. So it's now got enough power to kind of actually live up to the promise of those rather slinky looks. So this is all very favourable and to me this car feels aimed very much at somebody like myself because to be honest I'm fairly left cold by most mainstream cars whatever they're powered by. I mean you look at diesel engines and they are diesel engines you know they're economical you can go a long way on a tank of fuel and all that but they are you know they're not to my tastes I don't particularly like the power delivery or the noise or anything like that so they're better than they were but they are still diesel engines. Petrol engines unfortunately have kind of become just like diesels they're nearly all turbocharged now and they've got that same kind of binary power delivery they give you all the torque from about 1500 revs they run out of puff by about 5,000 you know, there's no incentive to rev them out anymore the direct injection most of them have is actually makes them less refined they actually sound quite like diesels don't they most modern petrol engines so there's not a great deal of difference between most diesel and petrol engines and of course you've got hybrids and I just don't buy into that to be honest I, you know I know they've been around for a long time I know a lot of people advocate them the industry's pushing them very hard as a way of lowering co2 and all that kind of thing but I just don't see the point in carrying around two powertrains one of which is completely redundant most of the time it just seems unnecessarily heavy complex all the rest of it yes you might get your kind of virtue signaling thing about driving a hybrid making out that you're kind of saving the planet that way but you're not really are you electric cars well yeah they're probably going to be there one day but uh, in the not too distant future as well but at the moment it's very dependent on how and where you live how and where you work whether or not you've got a driveway or a workplace that can let you charge it so if that works for you then great you're very lucky but I think as a mainstream alternative we're still some way off so we're accepting that internal combustion engines are going to be around for a while and the reason I'm so infused by this Mazda one is that it's the kind of internal combustion engine I like because it's naturally aspirated it likes revs and it's just good fun to drive and in the Mazda 3 it's got a nice package to operate in because when I first drove this car on the original launch I thought it's absolutely stunning looking it's a beautiful beautiful car but with just 122 horsepower from the standard two litre petrol it just didn't have enough power to live up to that but with this engine I think it it does so it's a great looking car it's got enough performance now to kind of cut it and it's got you know if you're company car tax and all that kind of thing it is now equivalent to kind of hybrid powered cars plug-ins and all that kind of thing but without any of the faff it's just an ordinary naturally aspirated petrol engine car without any of the kind of faff or kind of um, as I say virtue signaling that goes with driving a hybrid most of which as we know from studies that plug-in hybrids most people don't bother plugging them in they just take the tax benefit and don't actually do much to uh, indulge in the supposedly planet saving capabilities of the cars so with all that in mind I think this is a really important and interesting car where I think Mazda faces a challenge is in communicating that because you know I pity the poor salesperson in the showroom trying to explain what spark plug controlled compression ignition is all about to your average punter and frankly as much as I like kind of high revving traditional naturally aspirated engines most people these days have got more used to low end torque and turbocharging whichever pump they happen to fuel from modern cars have all got that same kind of 
torquey power delivery people aren't used to having to change down on hills and kind of rev the engine out are they and i think a lot of people are going to find that as a bit of a, a nasty surprise so it's literally going to be a difficult sell yes it looks nice but say imagine that conversation in the showroom you're glazing over as the poor salesperson is trying to explain how the engine works then you get out and drive and you go oh, it just feels a bit gutless doesn't it um that's kind of why i feel like i want to champion this car and make some fuss about it because in a very mazda way they've taken a, a difficult technology one that nobody else has really bothered with and like they did with rotary engines they've kind of used all that kind of grit and determination and kind of engineering eccentricity to really kind of push ahead and really try and deliver what many people would have considered undeliverable so it's to their credit for that but as i say i think they're going to struggle to sell the idea and the concept to people uh, as a kind of as a mainstream consumer product now this engine in an mx5 or something like that that's great you know if if this means that the uh, the mark 5 mx5 as and when it comes can have a naturally aspirated engine then hooray for that i'm very very happy and maybe we'll see higher performance applications of this engine down the line but as it is this car is not setting out to be a kind of gti chaser or a or a performance model by any stretch it's just a it's a it's fast enough and it's comfortable and it's refined and it's a great place to be to use that kind of road tester's term everything falls easily to hand corners on rails all that kind of stuff um no it's just a it's a really nice car to drive like all mazdas it's got great handling nice gearbox all that kind of stuff and it looks great so from all those perspectives i think it's a really really nice product and i really really do hope that people pick up on the advantages that this very very clever and pioneering engine brings all power to mazda on that front i say so i guess in conclusion what you can say is that the internal combustion engine is dead long live the internal combustion engine <laughs>